bring up a, bowl, a can of soup uh, this morning, so thank you for that. Um, I'm going to just question you a little bit from up here so we can remain all socially distant and safe. What are y'all excited about today? <laughs> oh, y'all can all say it together. Sunday. The Super Bowl, Super Bowl Sunday. Oh my gosh, what makes you excited about the Super Bowl? <laughs> you don't need to raise your hands, guys. Listen, they're well trained. They are, which is awesome. <laughs> the, the, we're going to win? That's what excites me too. And I can't wait to see um, how my son and my husband, but especially my son, cheer for Patrick Mahomes and cheer for everybody on the team and have so much fun. But you know what? Every Sunday is a little bit special. Maybe not as special as this one. But we're going to talk a little bit about Sabbath and Sabbath rest and what it means to, um, to, to take a Sabbath and why that's important. So that's part of what today is, too. We don't have to do anything but things that we enjoy and things that bring us together, um, like watching the Super Bowl together and watching Patrick Mahomes just make touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. Um, so enjoy the Sabbath, enjoy the Super Bowl, and thank you for joining me from afar. Let's pray. Oh, I have. She, she has an announcement. Oh. Did she give an announcement? Yes. Um, I had a text message from Lois Edwards this morning. Can you hear me over this? No. Okay. No. Lois Edwards texted me this morning and uh, asked for prayers for her, um, Marianne Burgess, that Sierra, the oldest great granddaughter, had passed away this morning. And so that's why I hope it says here. Sierra's the dark haired girl, if you remember which is which. <laughs> Sierra. Sierra. Mm -hmm. She has two children that they weren't living with her, so uh, okay. prayers for Mary <laughs> And of course, Lois. Thank you. Thank you. As I said, our scriptures this morning talk about uh, Sabbath. And so let's begin with a word of prayer. Gracious and merciful God, we praise and thank you for your word. We thank you for your written word given to us in our scriptures that we may know your laws and your commandments and the way you would have us live our lives. And we praise and thank you, Lord, for the living word, for the word made flesh, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, who came to open the scriptures to us and to show us through word and deed, through his life, death, and resurrection, what it truly means to live in the kingdom of God, loving God and neighbor. We ask your blessing upon us this morning as we read and hear and speak your written word. Through it, may we be challenged and strengthened to hear and know and follow the living word, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament reading this morning comes to us from Deuteronomy 5. Chapter or Deuteronomy 5, verses 12 through 15, and it's found on page 134 of your pew Bible. Observe the Sabbath day by keeping it holy, as the Lord your God has commanded you. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your ox or donkey or any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates, so that your manservant and maidservant may rest as you do. 
Remember that you were slaves in Egypt, and that the Lord your God brought you out of there with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm. Therefore the Lord your God commanded, has commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. This is the word of the Lord. Our New Testament passage this morning comes from the second chapter of Mark, beginning with verse 23, found on page 745. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his company were hungry and in need? In the days of Abiathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat, and he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even over the Sabbath. Another time he went into the synagogue, and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked them, Which is lawful on the Sabbath? To do good? or to do evil, to save life, or to kill. But they remained silent. He looked around them at them in anger, and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts, said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was completely restored. Then the Pharisees went out and began to plot with the Herodians how they might kill Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Before we get to the uh, synagogue and all of the stuff that Jesus and his companions aren't allowed to do on the Sabbath, but do anyway because they are, of course, Jesus and his companions, I want to ask you a question about our Old Testament passage. It is, of course, the uh, section from the Ten Commandments, as presented in Deuteronomy, that talks about the Sabbath. For how many of you, how many of you are familiar with that passage, with that reading of the Ten Commandments? How many of you remember it differently? Anybody? Well, the Ten Commandments are listed uh, twice in the Old Testament, once in Deuteronomy, and then several books before in Exodus, at the actual time that Moses was leading the people through the desert. And it is a little bit different. And so I want to read this to you from Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 verses 8 through 11, and if you'd like to follow along, it's on page 56 of your pew Bible. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a, day, a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you nor your son or daughter, nor your manservant or maidservant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them. But he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. No mention is made in Exodus of their time in Egypt as slaves. No mention is made in Deuteronomy of the days of creation and of God's resting on the seventh day, therefore making the Sabbath day holy. But here is what is the same between those two readings. You are to rest 
on the Sabbath day. You shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor maidservant, animals alien within your gates. From Deuteronomy, on it you shall do no, no work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your manservant, nor your maidservant, nor your ox, nor your donkey, nor any of your animals, nor the alien within your gates. The Sabbath is for everyone. The Sabbath is for everyone. Even animals are to be given rest on the Sabbath. And although Exodus and Deuteronomy do have two different emphases, when they talk about keeping the Sabbath holy, Exodus emphasizes your relationship with God. Keep it holy because God made it holy. Rest because God rested. Oh, I keep forgetting I'm on film. I can't really move much. Rest because God rested. And Deuteronomy emphasizes the social nature and the social justice nature of Sabbath and the relationship with one another. Remember that you too were slaves in Egypt and you got no rest. Rest on the Sabbath day and let others rest too. Those two are connected, inextricably connected. They cannot be separated and this is why. The first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Sabbath has to do not just with coming to church, not just with being holy, not just with our relationship with God, to do with our relationship with one another. How many of you have bosses at work? How many of you are bosses at work? Okay, okay. <laughs> Retired. You are your own boss. Um, what? I said now he's everybody else's boss. <laughs> So, um, if you're not a boss, if you have a boss, how many of you would find it fair if your boss said, I have Saturday off, but y'all got to keep working? And as bosses, if some of you are bosses, how fair do you think it would be to make your employees or those under your direction work so that you wouldn't have to? Because after all, if there's a day with no work done, that work has to be done sometime. It can either pile up or you can make the people without power in your life do it. But the Sabbath is for everyone. And when I'm taking a day off, that is the opportunity for me to say to everyone who might have responsibilities to me, to say, you rest too. I'm resting so you can rest. There's no work done today. It allows for those who depend on other people, as well as those who are responsible to other people, it allows everyone the same rest. It levels the playing field, as it were. As we know from many of our studies of the New Testament. 
keeping the law was very, 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 very important, with a few more berries behind that. It was very important because in Jesus' time, God's people were under the rule of the Romans. They had, they knew their history. They were slaves in Egypt. They knew their history. They were exiled in Babylon. And now here they were again under a foreign thumb. And they believed with all their heart that if they kept the law perfectly, God would deliver them. After all, read the prophets. Their exile in Babylon was prophesied and was blamed on their sinfulness. And so they needed to not sin anymore. They needed to remember the Sabbath as well as keeping every single one of all the, the laws. And in fact, by the time we get to Jesus' day, the scribes and the Pharisees and those who were um, leaders had done what some have called built a fence around the law. In other words, you don't even come near the fence. You don't even come near to coming near to breaking the law. You can, you, you, you can't do it. And the thing is, Jesus wouldn't disagree. Never a day, a moment in his life or ministry did Jesus disagree that we have to keep the law. But what Jesus brought Not even, it wasn't even a new understanding of the law. It was the right understanding of the law. It was what the law had meant this whole time. That they didn't understand or refused to understand. And that brings us to Jesus' encounter with the scribes and the Pharisees. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. But it was the Sabbath, and picking grain was fairly close, that a little bit, to harvesting which was working, which is unlawful on the Sabbath. But they were hungry. But they were hungry. And it's one thing for the scribes and the Pharisees to say, don't disobey the law. Don't disobey the Sabbath. But it's quite another when that obedience to the Sabbath includes withholding food from those who are hungry or even punishing those who eat when they are hungry. Not only that, it's right there in the scripture. There is precedent for it. When you are hungry, when you are in need, and food is available to you, eat it, my friends. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is. But it gets worse because another time he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for an excuse to, ac to accuse Jesus. 
They were laying in wait to trap Jesus somehow. And when this man with a shriveled hand walked into the synagogue, they had their chance. So instead of offering this man assistance, instead of engaging him or engaging Jesus in any sort of conversation, they just sat back and watched. What's Jesus going to do? What do you think Jesus was going to do? Hold out your hands, sir. Let me heal you. Jesus asked them which is lawful to do on the Sabbath, good or evil. Is it lawful to save life or is it lawful to kill? They didn't say a darn thing. They knew the answer. They didn't answer because they knew the answer and they knew the answer would accuse them would get them in trouble and would expose them for the lawless people they had actually become. Keeping the Sabbath is good. Giving rest to those around you as well as to yourself is good. But when you get so paranoid about keeping the law that you parse what equals work and what doesn't equal work to the point where healing someone, helping someone is not lawful, you got it backwards. You have got it absolutely backwards. There's another place in scripture where a woman seeks healing on the Sabbath and the, the, the leaders actually say, let her come on any other day of the week. Send her home with whatever day they are. Tell her to come back tomorrow. And here Jesus reminds them of Deuteronomy. Here, Jesus reminds them of who the Sabbath is for. This woman has been bent over for years. Should she not be set free on the Sabbath? Is not the Sabbath really the ideal time to heal, to save life, to, to free each other, to give each other rest. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt. You had no days off. You got no overtime pay. Your water breaks were probably fairly limited. Remember how that feels. And don't let that happen to other people. That is what the Sabbath is for. We've talked a lot about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God being, you know, like right here. Not off Sunday, not way up there, not... Not some vague concept, but the kingdom of God being right here, right now. God rested on the seventh day to model the Sabbath for his people, for his creation, but also so that the Sabbath rest in which 
to which we are invited could begin. Friends, we are living in the seventh day. We are living in God's Sabbath. And Sabbath was made for humankind, not humankind for the Sabbath. And if you are nitpicking through what you are allowed to pick up off the ground and how big it is before it becomes work to pick it up, if you are in favor of denying people food on the Sabbath because they would have to work to get it, if you are in favor of letting someone suffer a withered hand or a stooped over back or seven years of bleeding or leprosy or blindness for even 24 more hours, just so you don't have to work on the Sabbath by healing them, you've lost all understanding of what the Sabbath is about. The Sabbath is about rest. That doesn't mean that you have to sleep on the Sabbath, although, you know, sometimes that's good. It doesn't mean that you have to rest quietly on the Sabbath. You sure be in trouble with that were the case in my household. Quiet and still time is hard enough for the one hour in the evening that Dwayne is expected to be quiet and still. Um, quiet and still is quite boring in my house. Um, that doesn't mean you can't do anything fun. Or that you can do things fun as long as they're quiet. I love seeing people all psyched up for football. I even, it's not Pentecost, but I wore my red store. Because I thought, you know, give them a shout. Plus it's really, really cold, and red is the color of Pentecost fire, which, you know, hopefully will make things warmer. I love it. The Sabbath is for us. As long as our Super Bowl watching, as long as our merrymaking, as long as our fun or whatever we do on the Sabbath does not create a situation of injustice for others. The Sabbath is for us. We weren't created to make the Sabbath look good. Quite frankly, the Sabbath doesn't care. God created us in God's image and likeness out of love. He continues to care for us. God continues to care for us out of love. And God invites us in to God's Sabbath rest because God loves us. Now, there is that little minor detail of a bunch of guys in Tampa Bay getting ready to work today. Yeah. <laughs> and there is that tiny little detail of me standing up here and pastors all over the place, standing in their pulpits or in front of their cameras, or both, um, or, or preparing worship for their people. Is Sunday my Sabbath? It hasn't been in 18 years. But I do take a day. I do take a day when I screen my calls. When I plan things that are relaxing, or even necessary, but things that are life-giving. 
There are people who work on Sundays. How many of you have ever worked on a Sunday? Okay, yeah, yeah. And even those few patches uh, over the last 18 years when I haven't been in a pulpit, I've usually been working retail, which, you know, try and get a Sunday off of that. But take a day. Turn off whatever distracts you. Just one more thing. There's one more thing. Because um, how many of you have ever had babies or children under your care? You've had a lot of babies, have you? <laughs> no. Have you ever helped take care of your brothers? Yes. Yes. You ever had to do that on a Sunday? <laughs> they are very careful of your Sabbath. How many of you have ever changed a diaper on a Sunday? How many of you have ever cleaned up after your kid who just threw up on a Sunday? How many of you have ever fed your cat on a Sunday? I'm telling you, that is Sabbath work. That is Sabbath. Because those are examples of where you give those around you the chance to rest. The chance to be cared for. Is it work for you? Yeah. Is it smelling work for you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. but it's part of giving Sabbath and inviting everyone as you have been invited into God's Sabbath rest. I love Sundays. They're not my Sabbath as far as me getting a lot of rest, but I love them. I love my Sabbath. And I love what we are called to do. To give others Sabbath rest, as well as to take care of ourselves. If we see the image and likeness of God when we look at our neighbor, when we look at our friend, when we look at our family, fantastic. But remember that when your neighbor, your str the stranger on the block, your family look at you, they see the image and likeness of God. They see one created in the image and likeness of God. We are stewards of each other and we're stewards of ourselves. And Sabbath is stewardship. I promised Craig I'd get y'all out in time to go see the Super Bowl and all the, you know, pre-party festivities. We don't. So enjoy. We're not going to feed everybody today either, so. Okay. But enjoy. I know I will. Go home. Kick back on the couch. Have your friends over safely. Enjoy the game. Enjoy the commercials. Enjoy the halftime show. Enjoy the Sabbath. And remember to make it holy. Let us pray. Gracious and merciful God, thank you for all the days of creation. And thank you that they include the creation of Sabbath. Thank you for inviting us, Lord, into your rest and reminding us of your love for us by reminding us to care for one another, to extend Sabbath to them, to everyone. We pray in Jesus' name.
Our second hymn is number 713, Seek Ye First. You are invited to stand as you are able. 